Hello, and uh, welcome to another episode of Play the Hits. <clears throat> We're gonna continue on with our uh, conquest of talking Time Brothers tonight. Chris, how you doing? Chris isn't doing so bad. How are you, Nick? You know, if you can't tell by the metaphorical spring in my step, in my voice, or whatever... <laughs> the, um, the gate in my gird? Yeah, the piss in my vinegar. Whatever. <laughs> Anyways, I'm feeling much better than I was last week. I don't even remember us doing an episode of Resident Evil when we capped off that night, so... That's a shame, because that was probably one of my favorite Resident Evil episodes that we've done so far. Well, the great thing is it's on the internet, and it will never, ever go away, so I can yeah. just cue that up later. You know, what's really going to be a shame is I'm probably going to be the first one of us to die, and... Um... At that point, you're pretty much stuck with the Play the Hits videos for better or for worse, unless you remember the password that I gave everybody. Uh, you know, I can be thankful. I can um, count on Facebook to keep a record of that, so. There you go. You know, Facebook never forgets. Yeah, that's very true. You could probably contact Facebook and they can give you my social security number. Uh, where do we but anyway. Off? Anyways. So, so Nick, uh, question of the evening for you. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Original Game Boy. Okay. Game oh. Boy. Pocket or Game Boy Color? Oh, well, I mean, Game Boy Color, of course. I mean, you know. I mean, yeah, why not the best out of the three? I'm going to go out on a limb here, though, and say Game Boy Pocket. I loved the form factor of that one. And honestly, the color mm. of the games wasn't significant enough to me at that point to really make a true difference until the GBA came around. But... I will admit that I have the most fond memories of Game Boy Pocket because that was about the time that Pokemon came out, and I... yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, so you want to hear my Game Boy Pocket story? Go for it. All right, so um, I really, really wanted a Game Boy Pocket. And uh, yeah. there was this kid in Boy Scouts who had one. And he was going to so sell it. <laughs> well, oh. well, well. <laughs> let's just say Jimmy uh, Jimmy's still on the uh, missing kids list in Northwest Ohio. But anyway appeared on many a milk carton no anyways <laughs> was, um, you got his own episode of unsolved mystery <laughs> um anyways so i really wanted it and he was um we were gonna he was gonna sell it to me after our boy scout meeting for like 20 bucks and then he decided at the last minute he wanted like 40 and Fuck i'm you, i'm sorry i didn't have enough paper route money to you know buy that so i told my dad my dad's like hold on i'm gonna go talk to him oh god <laughs> Nick, this, at this point, I was too embarrassed to, like, you know, stand close enough to hear what was going on. But, um, anyways, so, uh, Jimmy. My, my dad so, Jimmy, came you back. Tell and, me what the uh, hell's going on? <laughs> dad came back, and all of a sudden, Matt was willing to sell that Game Boy Pocket for 20 bucks. Oh, it was Matt, not Jimmy. <laughs> my, my, you, you, uh, you reneging on my deal here, Matt? My, my shame was outstripped by my joy at having a Game Boy to finally play through this thing called uh, Pokemon that everyone was into. That's hilarious. And for some reason, my dad gave me an extra 20 bucks. There, <laughs> He just robbed Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, anyway, anyways, so yeah, there's my Game Boy Pocket story. So yeah, I remember I would play that thing on my paper routes um, until like every single day in the summer, scorching hot. You know, there I yeah. was leveling up my little Blastoise. Nice. Yeah, mine's not quite that interesting. So basically, I inherited my first Game Boy... Uh, an original Game Boy, which is, you know, really kind of a collector's Those item. Those were big, big honkers. They were, and that, and that was kind of the issue that I had with it. I inherited it from my grandpa, so I didn't pay a cent for it or anything like that. But where it really started to get pricey was the number of batteries um, it consumed <laughs> and, like, and, like, how fast it consumed them. So the Game Boy Pocket came out, I'm like, oh, freaking finally. It only takes two AAAs, and they last, like twice as long and so those were ravenous yeah yeah and, and then the the kind of strange looking green screen was replaced with just like this nice solid black and white um so so i really liked the game boy pocket and i played the heck out of it kind of like you said it was around the pokemon area era and so i i dominated uh red and blue and yellow on um on my game boy pocket i did eventually um one christmas ask for a uh uh, a Game Boy Color, and but really, there were only two games that I ever really played that took advantage of it, which is why I don't have as fond of memories. And that was um, Link to the Link's, Link's Awakening yep. uh, DX, and then um, Metal Gear Solid Ghost Babble, <laughs> which was like one of the most forgotten, like underexplored, weird little gems in that entire franchise. 
In fact, I think it's worth some money. What was Ghost not... Babble? I don't remember that. I mean, I remember Metal Gear Acid, but I don't remember Ghost Babble. It was basically just an alternate universe retelling of the original Metal Gear Solid, but in the jungle instead of Shadow Moses. It basically kind of married Metal Gear Solid and the original NES Metal Gear. Like, mm -hmm. that was pretty much what it did. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like, it even had the same characters. You know, it had Campbell and Meryl and Snake, and they were all meeting for the first time. It, it was literally just kind of plot beat for plot beat, the original Metal Gear Solid, but, you know, set in just kind of this alternate dimension sort of thing. I thought there'd be a star over there. Hello. Nope. <clears throat> You're so, dead. so then what was the story with Metal Gear Acid? Wasn't that basically just another retelling? Uh, no, Metal Gear Acid was its own, like, really crappy beast. Um, it was... Uh -huh. Um, it was another alternate universe thing, but you played as a character who was neither Solid Snake, Solidus Snake, or, um, or Naked Snake. He was called, uh, Acid Snake. And, really, Nick? um, it was a, it was kind of like a tactical, almost RPG kind of game, as I recall. It was a card really, game, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe it was more card game flavored, but it really didn't work well, and, um, because it didn't actually fit into the larger Metal Gear uh, mythos, like, even people who were playing for the story went away disappointed, so it was mm -hmm. it was just not great. I, I, strangely enough, I heard they improved a little bit with Metal Gear Acid 2, which, you know, why that got a sequel, I'm not sure. Um, but by then, you know, too little, too late. And, and I mean, Kojima isn't exactly a master storyteller, so I'm not <laughs> faulting him for, for, you know, deviating from his main timeline, but the way in which he did it just didn't really function very well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was I was actually pretty pleased with the uh, PSP a as a system. So um, I, I, I did play it um, and got about halfway through it. I was like, you know what? I'm not having fun, so something's up. <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to give this one a hard pass. Um, <clears throat> Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops uh, was a bit closer uh, to the goal. I, I mean, it did continue off of uh, Naked Snake's storyline before he was Big Boss. Um, it did introduce you to young Roy Campbell. Um, so it did a few interesting things, um, but, you know, just kind of the mission structure. I, I understand why they did it the way they did it. It was a portable game, and so they kind of had to break it up into, like, little there micro missions. Uh-huh. Yeah. So they had to break it up into little micro missions. But at the same time, like, I feel like that sort of diminished some of the challenge of it. Um, you know, kind of the, the unique thing about the original Metal Gear Solid games was that you're in kind of a persistent environment. So mm -hmm. even if you make your way past an enemy, like, you're you're never out of the woods. The very linear progression of Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops meant that once you cleared an area, you know, you were good until you booted up the next mission. So, like, yeah. It, huh. it was just kind of an interesting... I, I didn't dislike it, but it's certainly not in my top tier Metal Chris, Gear. Chris, you're not it's selling me on getting it. I thought you played Portable Ops. No. Um, all I know about it is that it's, you know, like the least offensive of the portable Metal did Gear you, games. Did you do Piss Taker? I mean, Peace no. Walker? No. I wanted to. Well, guess to, how I feel about that game. <laughs> you have made your feelings on that known several times. Yeah, and it's kind of more of the same, but that game committed the cardinal sin of actually trying to bridge... Uh, main entries in the Metal Gear Solid series, which well, what, between again, like five and uh, you between know what? Uh, basically three and five. It, it, it's okay. Yeah. I got halfway through that sentence and I stopped caring. <laughs> yeah, right. I, so, I remembered again, how much like, five wanted me to go ahead and play that game, but it just didn't happen. So, so like in the grand jumbled scheme of Metal Gear Solid's timeline, um, where they continually deviate between Solid Snake and Big Boss, uh, three and five are probably the closest companions. Mm -hmm. Um, so, after oh, Metal Gear crap. Solid... Oh, crap. After Metal Gear Solid 3, he defeats the boss, he becomes big boss, but then everything still goes to hell for him, and he's, like, kind of in his own little rogue state. And so, Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops is him kind of forming his own army. Um, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker is kind of a more story-driven version of the exact same damn thing. Oh, that's um, right. That, that, mm -hmm. that kind of introduces some of the characters that are really, um pertinent to ground zeros oh. which is the prologue of metal gear solid 5 if you follow that congratulations you now have a doctor you're now a doctoral candidate candidate in metal gearology so um <laughs> you know i'll never understand how kojima has just the most some, sometimes just has the most no 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 oh, no yoshi why 
Son of a dog. Well, Son anyways, so... This is the PG episode where we just don't swear. Wait, I've already sworn a couple times, haven't I? You know, you know I who think... I think would do better at this stage? Whom? Luigi. Super, Super Luigi. Hey, I've only died once. You gotta die like three times for Super Luigi territory. To unlock the privilege of Super Luigi. Oh, so, um, Super Luigi origin story. You heard it here first. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, I have a bit of an update here from a conversation from last week. <clears throat> Oh boy. Okay, so... Considering you don't remember much of last week, this should be good. I do remember this because it irritated me. So, uh, remember <laughs> our conversation... <laughs> you know what grinds my gears? You know what really grinds my gears? Oh, jeez. Liberal, <laughs> liberal juice. Oh, sorry. Oh, what you... Anyway. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, Anyways, um... Hey, we got our first flag. So... We haven't even uploaded this yet, man. That's remember impressive. when we were talking about um, Baker's Dozens? Oh, yeah. Okay, I figured that out. All right, so, Baker's Dozen is indeed... 13. Okay. Now, that comes from the uh, idea that, like, during um, some famines in Britain, you bought your bread by essentially the pound. So instead of giving mm -hmm. people a dozen, like, loaves of bread, they'd pack a 13th or a 14th in there to meet the weight requirements or else they could publicly flog you. Oh, fun. Yeah, so that's why it's a baker's dozen. Now, Avoiding murder. Avoiding public murder. Very so, good. I wasn't actually too far off. Um, what I was thinking of of a dozen dozen is actually called a gross. Oh, yeah, okay. That yeah. makes sense. Are you familiar with what a gross is? Yeah, but not like since high school home ec yeah, or something it's, like um, that. It's a dozen dozen. And the way it works is this is actually kind of cool. A gross is a way of... Hello? Did they just take Yoshi from you? Yes, but oh. look what I've gained. <laughs> a giant black phallus. So, um, anyways, the way gross works is by using your thumb to count your four fingers and the finger bones, you can count to 122 on one hand. Ah, so it basically transforms your hand into a little abacus, which I thought nice. was cool. Can we dwell a little bit on the fact that Mario's riding a giant black dong? I we actually timed that to try and distract you. Yeah, that was impressive. I, there were so many jokes, and I was like, come on, Nick, shut up. <laughs> Knuckles walks in. Whoa, it looks like you guys is busy. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll come back later. You let me know when Resident Evil 2 starts. Oh, I didn't get hit. Huh, imagine. There we go. Oh, there, there it is. Go. Welcome to Choke Well Town. done. Never mind. Well done, good and faithful servant. Look at that flower. Was that your keys or your dog? That was my dog who had my keys. Nice. Now he decided that now would be a good time to uh, get up and stretch. <laughs> Hammer Brothers oh, suit. Nice, dude. Hammer Brothers suit is like my favorite power up. My entire. It's just so rare. You feel like you've really earned it when you get it. Right. Um, my entire Mario World. Um... Oh, I mean, it's useless. Yeah, my, the arc my... is horrible, but. <laughs> Oh no, it's wonderful. I mean, heck, you can even uh, crouch down and you can protect yourself from uh, fireballs. See, I can never aim it very well. It's just like a fire flower, but with more um, trajectory. I, I would... You know what would be great as a heat-seeking hammer? Well, why, well, yeah, it's called Super Luigi. It's called Super... Oh no! No! Rex, Damn you, Nick! Could you not... What? Is what? He doing? Oh, well, he, he's... He's standing on the mouse. What do you have to say? Where is your god now? Are you gonna talk some shit? Talk shit, get hit, son. <laughs> I, I dare you, Nick. Open up that crap mouth of yours. So, how many games was uh, the Hammer Brothers suit actually in? Because I know it was introduced in Mario 3. Yeah, that's the only one that I'm aware of, canonically. Anyways. I think they tried to add it as an item in uh, one of the remakes they did for, like, the Wii or something. Oh, like the new Super Mario Brothers? The, yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember oh, if it was no. like the new two or whatever. Dude, why are you so good at getting like through these passages and then getting like hit by something stupid? I like have this weird thing with this game where it tends to turn on and off. Like at one point I'm a platforming master, and then like I can hardly walk from A to B. You just freaking enter the zone, and then yeah, then you just get hit by like, throwaway fireball from Ludwig. Oh, Ludwig, I thought that was Homer Simpson. That's got way too much hair for Homer Simpson. I'll, gi I'll give you, like, 
Oh, that was easy. I don't know who I'll give you there. I'll give you the doc from Back to the Future. And with that, we're done with Cotton Candy Land. Oh. My diabetes. Still not as fun as Super Size Fries Land. <laughs> Which is nowhere near as cool as Whopper Land. World 6, Cheese Mountain. I thought we were a lot oh. further. Alright, whatever. Su Super Luigi? My butt hurts. My butt hurts. So does mine, but for different, different reasons. reasons. Yeah. Alrighty. In we Actually, go. I should probably clarify that real quick. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Go I, on. I tend, I tend to sit uh, a good portion of my day and I'm just glad to get up. You know, they say getting up once every hour is really good for you. Yeah. Uh, of well, course, I mean, it kind of depends on my day. Some days I'm hardly sitting. Hello. No! Oh, your sacrifice was in vain. You sacrificed both of you to get that coin. Why what, don't what I try to do the stage the proper way, huh? How about that? So, Nick, I'm noticing there's a game on sale on Steam that seems right up your alley. Mm -hmm. What's Space it? Engineers. I it seems like haven't heard 3D, of it. 3D, uh, 3D, um, whatchamacallit, uh, crap. Oh. Stardew Valley in space, from, from what I can tell. Hey, this is working out pretty well. Just don't do anything. Oh, nice. But, dude, I, I can see you actually getting kind of obsessed with this. This is kind of fun. Joseph it's and I only, are uh, actually getting ready to $16. do a, um, another Terraria run through this weekend. So it's kind of like where our simulator project is tied up right now. Huh. That's cool. But this is actually like a really pretty game. I'm kind of surprised. Well, when we're done here, I'll developed. probably take a look at that and uh, wish list it. Yeah. You know, because Steam is so full of stuff, you have to wish list things just to keep track of what's on there these days. Right. It actually kind of looks like they borrowed a lot of artistic assets from the Mass Effect series. Um, Speaking of but... Mass Effect, uh, have you seen uh, Anthem yet? Oh, no, I haven't, but I've heard it's kind of a mixed bag. Eh, I wouldn't say mixed bag. I j Hello. I'm just going to marvel at this real quick. <laughs> nice. Someone went through the trouble of programming this for that me. Is, that is, they made a perpetual motion machine with Mario. Perpetual Mario motion machine. Perpetual Mario machine. <laughs> that sounds like the new uh, Nintendo Switch game of the year. Yeah, Mario Maker does not have anything on this. Per perpetual Mario machine. <laughs> you know the funny thing about this level is I would freak out multiple times and quit holding down. <laughs> and just try to like finesse my way through it don't overcompensate right at the door wow that that is impressive i am <laughs> there's that coin that well is, done that guys. is impressive that was very well done okay um yeah anthem less of a hit or miss more of just uh, a friend and i kind of played through it uh, at some point last week and it was it just couldn't seem to figure out what it wanted to be Okay, but at the end of the day, was it fun to fly around in your Iron Man suit? It was for, um, so long as that day is only about 20 minutes long. Alright, well, when it goes down to, like, a $5 bargain game, I'll... I thought it was, um, funny because we played Anthem for about, I don't know, like an hour, and then we spent the next two hours playing through Tom Clancy's Wildlands. Nice. So I yeah. still can't, like, fathom that you enjoy that game. Well, I mean, it's, it's the thing is, it's not like a Tom Clancy game. It's it's really just like uh, Metal Gear Solid Five. Huh. I mean, I guess you'd have to see it to understand, but yeah, I mean, that's. Hello. I think I found what happened this, there. I I think I lost momentum, but I found where the second star is. So there's that. Would you like to play a Super Luigi? I only died once. Anyways. Across like three levels, though. Hey, hey, this is uh, Talking Time Brothers. This is like elite hardcore territory. Nice. Cut me some cut me some credit. So I don't think that's how that phrase goes, but okay. Yeah, whatever. Whatever floats on water. Whatever sinks your fucking shit, man. <laughs> what? So what else is on your mind, Chris? Not a whole lot. I was thinking about that game I was pondering that Game Boy question uh, since before this episode, but I'm kind of like nostalgic for uh, Game Boy era Nintendo right now, which is kind of weird because I haven't really been before. I mean, um, you know, granted that new Legend of Zelda game is coming out this year. I think that's what did it. I, th I think that's what got me jonesing uh, for some classic uh, GB Nintendo. But um, 
they've got uh, apparently Nintendo has registered a trademark for a uh, Game Boy Classic in the same vein as the NES and SNES. Mm -hmm. So I would love to see that. And what I would really love to see is to have it come with just a little freaking HDMI port uh -huh. uh, in it so that we can actually record it. Because there are a couple oh. Game Boy games that I think would be really great one episode plays. I agree. All right, you know what? I don't, I don't, what do you want from me? What do you want from they me? They want Yoshi. They want you to sacrifice a Yoshi is what I they want. I don't have a Yoshi. Get one. So is this the secret star? Yeah, it's... Question is how. Right. I'm. You've got to be able to just catapult yourself down that hill, right? Oh, I would imagine. Okay. All right, what I need is that P block. Yep. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Momentum. Momentum. Get it. There you go. You nailed it. Okay. Got that. Oh, oh, how clever and horrible. Okay, now you're on borrowed time. Okay. Super borrowed time, bros. <laughs> Super, let's get the fuck out of here, bros. <gasps> Super, make for the goddamn no! doors. No! no! You got both. Snake! Snake! Time okay, paradox. Right. Dude, did you ever play... Um, um... Hmm. Revengeance or whatever uh, Ninja Raiden's game was. Oh. Speaking of Metal Gear. Oh. I might have lost Nick. Alright, I'm going to read from the Illusion of Gaia instruction manual since that's what's here next to me. Companions of the Cave, page 30. Will often meets with his school friend in a seaside cave in the You're south part of town. Yep, hello? Huh. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I just began reading from an instruction manual because I thought I lost you. Uh huh. My uh, TV died. Oh. Give me a so here. You, you can't see anything then. Okay. Hmm. Let let, let me troubleshoot this. Okay. Apologies for that. We're back. Um, I had to go to my backup TV. I don't know what that was. I think the other one just burned out. So, hey, you can finally get a 4K television and join the 21st century. Yeah, maybe. that. Maybe this is a bit of a, a blessing in disguise, huh? Yeah. Well, that other TV was kind of on borrowed time. I, I don't know if I told you this story or not, but um, back about a year ago, there's a really strong thunderstorm that came in and struck somewhere almost just outside of her house and um, caused a power surge in it blew that tv as well as this i guess graphics card on my brother's computer oh that sucks oh well if you think that's bad the church across the street it uh fried thirty thousand dollars worth of kids computers in their lab Ooh. yeah and that of course that they had to pay something like a fifty thousand dollar or um not fifty but a twenty thousand dollar deductible in order to you know get the insurance to kick in right which makes That's me wonder what's fun. the point to insurance at that point, but... Yeah, seriously. So Insurance is just a fucking scam. So, anyway, <laughs> I'll tell you how I really feel. Uh, when it comes to insurance, I always go by the uh, Ned Flanders mantra of uh, insurance is basically just gambling. Yeah, right. That's... But, you know, every once in a while, like, something will break, and I'm not really super sad that it breaks. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I've, like, been considering getting something new anyways. But that's not That's not the worst feeling. Oh, man, but, uh, boy, I could definitely stand not to have to replace the TV right now. Yeah, Well, sure. I mean, I do have the backup backup television, but... The backup backup. Hmm. And then, hey, you could always just drag out your old tube TV and, uh... Funny enough, we have Just get one, one of those converter boxes. Oh, yeah, you gotta have a tube TV to play classic systems. Have you ever tried <laughs> to play a Nintendo 64 on an HD TV? Uh, I have not. Tell me of your experience. Oh, it's like nails on a freaking chalkboard in, in video game lingo. I have um a little bit of a problem with when I try to play an older game in that... What's that? Oh, it makes this move. So I have a problem in that when I try to use the NES or even the N64, like I was trying to play through Donkey Kong 64 recently. Yeah. And um, anyways, everything was coming in really, really dark. Oh, really? No, it's nothing like visual necessarily, though, though, you know, you certainly notice a lot of kind of the uh, quirks of that era of gaming uh, 
uh, especially on the 64. Um, just because, like, they weren't built to be in that high resolution. Right. But the, the worst part of it is just the fact that it, uh, there's, like, a delay that wasn't uh, present there on old TVs and, and things like that. Even with game mode, it still doesn't quite recapture it. Remember the days when you had to turn all of your, your TV to, um, what was it? Channel, Channel three. 3. Yep, in order or to four. play games. Or, th or 4. Or 4 occasionally. Yeah, flexibility, yeah. I can't remember why that was. I don't know. I don't know enough about, like, the technology of that era because I'm really old enough to understand it. I mean, I know that it works. I don't know why it works. I know. Yeah. It's, it's no need to know the why, just that it does. Yeah, right. When I had a TV um, in my bedroom as a kid that was so old school that um, it didn't even have the um, hey, RGB... Me. The RGB cables, I had to get that, like, um, little, like, screw-in one that goes at the end of the, um, uh, man, I don't even remember what that port is called. Um, not S-Video, but, um, you know, like, where your cable line would go in on the back of old TVs. Uh, or, I guess, even with new TVs, they still <laughs> um, have that. The but... coaxial cable. Coax, thank you. Yes, yeah. that's what it was. So, so I had to get the coax converter for my NES and N64. Or NES and SNES. By the time we got N64, I could do RGB. You know, that reminds me. My N my first N64, because I think the N64 had the RF switch, didn't it? Yeah, instead of a coaxial Maybe. cable, it had an RF switch. I ended up having to break my arms at school in order to get an N64 for my grandma. Wait, say that again? Okay, so when I was at Catholic school, like in fourth grade, I kind of fell off the swing set backwards and uh, broke my arms. <laughs> Shat shattered is probably the um, better term, but... Yeah, and I mean, so your grandma, being an extraordinarily cruel person, would think to herself, man, this would be a great time to get him a video game system he can't play. Well, all she knew about me was that I liked video games. Like, okay, I would tell her I wanted X game, and I would get something else. Like, um... <laughs> and that's how Nick, uh... Asked for Super Mario World and got a copy of Plot. You're God. really close, actually. I asked for a copy of Super Mario World. I got Super Adventure Island. Super Adventure Island. Is that the one with the kid who can't attack? He can only run really slow and, like, duck? Uh-huh. Oh, my God. I think I, I saw Game Grumps play that. I asked for Yoshi's Island. I got Jurassic Park. <laughs> it's got dinosaurs. What? <laughs> What kind of you game are all the kids that? wanting to play today? Oh, dinosaurs. I don't know why I made your grandmother so Jewish. I apologize. <clears throat> well, she was, so, you know, there's oh. that. Wow, she must have hated you Catholics. Well, you know, I guess she was no better wonder enough. No she kept giving you terrible Well, games. I mean, you know, the, the, the Nazis kind of rounded up most of her um, family back in, I think it was Poland, so. Oh, lovely. Yeah. I but mean, it... absolutely not lovely. Let's... Huh. Let's make that clear right now. But... I actually got kind of a interesting family genealogy when I start thinking about it. I didn't know you were a uh, one-eighth Israeli. I honestly kind of wonder about that side of my family. We don't talk about my mom's side of the family too much, but anyways, I'm getting too far afield. So anyways, all she knew is that I liked video games, and how can you screw up getting your kid an N64, right? Now if you get bar mitzvah, there's more where this came from. Okay, now she just sounds like female JFK. <laughs> Ich bin ein uh, Jew. <laughs> what, what, what did he say? He said, I'm a donut. Come on, he's American. He's a goddamn donut. What don't you understand? Oh my god. Hello. Hammer Bros. Yeah, so anyway, she sent us a check for $200 that my parents, God bless them, used for the intended purpose of buying me an N64. Score? Yeah, so that's how I got my N64. Dude, you must have got that pretty late for 200 bucks. Hello. No. That was, you got robbed. Th 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 oh, I know, right? Like, on the pixel. Yep. Grant me well, where power. What did N64's debut at? They I, had to have been at least 400. I think they... No. I I don't know. Maybe the check wasn't for 200. Maybe it was for 400. Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I got to Google this. I'm actually really curious. It's fascinating to me how, mu how expensive and inflated uh, the video game industry has gotten with its success. Are, well, I mean, not really, because think about it. Games have been selling for $60 for, good lord. If anything, it's one of the industries that's been the least affected by inflation. 
I mean, come on, Mega Man 2 retailed for $60. You weren't shitting me, man. Check this out. Launch 200? price of the N64, 200 bucks. Yeah, all right. Wow. That's a freaking steal. Always believe in yourself. Well, which is crazy because, um, according to this, the NES launched in 1985 for the same price. Although it also has next to it a price of two forty nine ninety nine, so I'm not sure what that means. So it was either <laughs> two hundred or two fifty. I'm not sure. The SNES also launched for two hundred. Hmm. The GameCube didn't launch for two hundred, did it? I feel like we would have seen the price increase with the GameCube. The Wii launched for two fifty. I remember that because I actually bought my own Wii. The Wii U launched for three fifty. I believe that the Switch launched for three hundred. That's also correct. Yeah, okay, Nintendo's just a little bit uh, ahead of the curve as far as their uh, console prices. I guess that's right. It, it's Sony that, where they really started to inflate. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you're right. I mean, given the fact that for the last, you know, 20 years, it's been about 50 or 60 bucks for a new minted game. Um, but at the same time, you, nowadays you get, like, the deluxe editions and the collector's runs. Well, don't forget the season like the passes, deal. too. So, I mean, they've kind yeah. of found their so, way so to that, weasel more money. that's really where the inflation takes place. It, I mean, it, it, it's kind of up to the developers whether they want to give you a, uh, finger quotes, complete experience out of the box or whether you have to pay $20 extra for that privilege. Mm -hmm. I mean, not everyone can be CD Projekt Red. <laughs> Then there's on the opposite end of that spectrum. Well, that's the weird thing, though. I was going to say Square Enix is on the opposite end of that spectrum with FF15, but then they did just release Dragon Quest XI, so we've had this conversation before, but it bears repeating. It's, it's just weird how like bipolar that company is. Mm -hmm. You are not going to get this guy, dude. You need ham roast. Hmm. I'll be back with more appropriate weapons. I'll be back with my hammer. <laughs> Maro just stands out of the Lakitu's house and he's just like there with his hammer. Gonna... You gotta come out sometime, Deadbeat. Oh god. Honey, is he still out there? Just go to sleep. Go to sleep. Tuck the kids in. I'm gonna handle it, okay? I don't know how, but I'm gonna handle it. Oh, you. Mm. Oh my god, does he. Does he have a friend? Yeah, and I can't tell, but it looks like. Kinda looks like an echidna? <laughs> hey, Mario. <clears throat> Who are we waiting for? You want me to go in and bust their skulls? Oh, no, no. This is the part that I get off. All right. Well, when you need, some, when you need Knuckles, you just let Knuckles know. <clears throat> well, at least I got that star. <laughs> I've got this image in my head of Mario and Knuckles just menacing this poor family of Lakitas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. What can I say? He crossed the, the wrong man. Hey, Joseph. You back from work? Joseph, um, some things happened while you were out. Not good. And we're down a TV. We're down a TV and we got a broken window. Not related. Also, Knuckles has been sending us a lot of bills. Well, that, All right. that TV... <coughs> I swapped TVs, but that one looks like it finally gave up the ghost and burned out. Duncan smashed the living room chair into the window while I was out. Uh, taking care of Brianna because she is deathly ill and possibly dying. Wow, and, today uh, kind of... Knuckles, Knuckles is just being Knuckles. Today kind of sucked for everybody but me. On the up hand, though, there's some Spanish fried rice in the fridge. And it's really good. And, and, and Nick is doing great. Yeah, Nick's doing, Nick's doing Nick's okay. Nick's doing good, so that's something to celebrate. So, um, TV shopping tomorrow? Son of a bitch. Dude, do you remember like those old Best Buy commercials where they played that jingle and showed like the guy walking out and so <laughs> Wow. wow. That, was like, that was I brought that, that on was myself. Masterfully executed. Uh, anyways. Do you remember those old Best Buy commercials where they would show like the family walking out in slow motion with their new computer or something? They would play that jingle like the do 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 Not off that's, that's how I picture tomorrow going. <laughs> you know why buy a tv when you just wait for someone with a new tv to come out of the store i know that best buy is going under rapidly and cannot stand in the face of like amazon but at the same time like when i think of best buy and the experience of going there that's still the image that i have in my head 
You know, say what you will about Amazon, but for $150 a month, I get Amazon Prime and <laughs> Amazon Prime and all the access I could ever want to um, Unsolved porn? Mysteries. Mother! Oh, yeah. M murder porn, in other words. Dude, did you just say $150 a month? <laughs> $150 a year, whatever it is. There you go. I was going to say, I think Amazon might be taking you for a <laughs> ride, friend. <laughs> The charges have been clearing for the last 36 months and nobody did anything about it. it oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, that was Play the Hits, everyone. Good night. It cuts to Jeff Bezos and Knuckles standing outside your house with a baseball bat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jeff, he's got to come out sometime. You want Knuckles to go in and start a little fire? <laughs> no, no, no. This is the part I get off on. <laughs> God bless you, Jeff Bezos. God oh, bless goodness. you, Knuckles. If it weren't for Knuckle Bucks, I don't know where I'd be right he's, now. He's got more more money than Kingpin, but not quite as evil. <laughs> he, Jeff Bezos blew that the Knuckles whistle a few times to get where he's at. <laughs> hey, you made it. Yeah, a little murder triangle here. Interestingly enough, that's what I call... Oh, never mind. <laughs> no, okay, good. There was a sex joke to be had in there somewhere, but... You know, I, I don't know where to go after that. I think uh, the uh, TV. Somebody that, help! I think the TV that died though was a floor model from like seven years ago, so it's not like we didn't get our money's worth. But what what kind of television was it? Oh, it was a Samsung. What'd you say, Joseph? Oh, no, really? LG. Yeah, an LG. Oh, it's an LG. Well, that's I, surprising. Again, LGs this... are pretty reliable. I've had I've had issues with um. Samsung's dying on me. Well, actually, so I mean, that didn't surprise me. It may bear repeating, but the TV did get struck by lightning at one point. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> did get... The fact that it mustered. Oh. Always the, the, the freaking. Mustered the kind of effort that it did until its dying breath is really quite remarkable. Yeah, th that we got any more time out of it is impressive. I'll just cherish the memories. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, no, did I ever tell you about the. Uh, current tv situation uh in, in uh my game room here no Please, so i've, I've got this more. very this very lovely sony 4k that i'm extremely happy with um and, and uh it's, it's a fantastic tv and has not failed me as, as in any way shape or form as long as i've had it but leading up to that i took advantage of a black friday deal mm -hmm. and got a um uh, this Did was you say um, something, Joseph? i can't hear you anyways go on this was, let me think, 2016, because that's when FF15 came out. And it was uh, also when I decided to upgrade to the PS4 Pro and make the switch over to 4K. Uh -huh. And so I, I uh, searched the Black Friday deals. I saw a Samsung TV that I thought was a really good steal at uh, like 450 or $500 or something like that. And you have to remember, this was when 4K was like right on the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And so um, I went and picked that up. And uh, about two months late, or, or, or sorry, I brought it home, and right out of the box, like, just the screen wouldn't come on. Like, there was some kind of problem with the oh, LED. Oh, I think I remember and this. And so they, uh, I, I went and uh, uh, talked to the, the folks at Best Buy, and they were really cool about it. They replaced it. Um, but then it got tricky, because it was a couple months later, uh, oh. like spring of the next year, that it did the same damn thing. It just died one day. Um... And there, uh, you know, after a certain amount of time, hmm. reasonably they believe that I might have messed it up. So, and, you know, it kind of fell outside of their store warranty. So I had to actually do this really complicated song and dance with Samsung. And, um... Well, we'll get the second way more, star later, but anyways. Spent way more time uh, than I would have liked to on phone with their customer service. And after probably a solid, like, two weeks without a, uh... A television which bear in mind gaming is like my one like release reprieve from my work a day life basically uh -huh. um they, they finally struck some kind of deal with best buy where i could return it for a model of equivalent value well luckily i think there was like a labor day or president's day or whatever some spring holiday is veterans day uh holiday sale going on and they didn't, Samsung, even though they footed the bill with Best Buy, they didn't specify. It, they, all they said was that the TV had to be of equal or lesser value to the one that they sold me. Uh -huh. And so there was a shiny, new, slightly more technically impressive Sony on sale 
for that same price. I'm like, you're damned if I'm going with Samsung again. <laughs> so uh, for, for the price that I paid, I ended up actually getting a um, slightly better uh, model from uh, Sony. Who I, you know, I've always, TV-wise, I've always gone... I feel like I broke whatever forth. the puzzle was, but whatever. Yeah, you did it. That's the important thing. I always went back and forth between uh, Samsung, Sony, and LG. Those are, I mean, and those are kind of the big three right now, anyways. But you know, I, I, the, the interesting thing about Samsung is the previous TV that I owned from them, I still own. It's sitting in our living room, being used right now, and it's actually a really reliable system. It's um, it's a 1080p. Uh, nothing. It's not a smart TV or anything too impressive, but it's extremely reliable. It looks great picture-wise for its age. And it's never given me a single problem. But for some reason, when uh, the 4K TVs came out, um, for whatever reason, whatever that particular model of Samsung I had, it just freaking screwed the pooch. Like, huh. hard. And it, like, it, it, you know, just kind of like tried to abort, like, the, the mutant hybrid puppies. And yeah, it was, it was bad. What was I talking about? I'm not entirely sure, but it started with you talking about, like, a toaster or something. Oh, man. You know we don't own a toaster? Really? How do you toast toast? In the oven, <laughs> like animals. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, I mean, it's one of those things where, like, we keep saying we're gonna buy it, but then it's like, you know, I could spend twenty bucks on this toaster, or I could get a couple bags of Funyuns. <laughs> you know? I was gonna say, I mean, like, we're not talking about, you know, like, say, a television here. We're talking about like a five dollar at Goodwill item. Yeah, but you know, it's just like right on the edge, you know, where like it's not like a throwaway purchase, but it's also not like something that you need to seriously consider. I swear and to so God, whenever... if, if you own a lemon zester in your house, you have no room to talk. Dude, you bought us that lemon zester. I bought you a lemon zester? That was a freaking wedding gift, you charlatan. Huh. Well, if you <laughs> spent money on a lemon <laughs> zester... Anyways, I have, I do have more than one jigger in this house. So ah, we'll say there we go. There it is. It's always the booze with you, Chris. Well, I mean, now that is something that is high use in your house, so. Well, you know, I was just going to say, I'm a hobbyist. I like mixing my own cocktails, and so I have little jigger and big jigger, which, um, how do we not get, s that's got to be a strike, right? No, 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 no. We're, talk we're talking about jiggers. Enough. I do love me some good jiggers. What, what exactly is a jigger? I mean, I assume it like it's the little stirs. like measuring thing. It's like the little measuring cup for um, like shots and alcohol. Huh. They just... usually come double sided with like a half ounce and then a one ounce. I always thought you kind of just like held the bottle upside down for a second and there was your shot. Until it's halfway full and then you fill the other half with the mix-ins. I yeah. said one second. The, the gin and tonic that's just like breathing chemicals. Well, yeah, you, you know how I am about alcohol, though. I'm, you know, gin is the one uh, liquor that I will absolutely like over miss. Did I just like, I, I, kill most all the thwomps by accident? You did. That was impressive. I, I like my gin and tonics very gin for. I've only really been able to drink one alcohol that doesn't just roil my stomach like drinking paint thinner. Wait, is this the Mad Dog 2020 that I got you for uh, Thanksgiving? Uh, when you're... Nope, I'm actually referring to that Songbird coffee liqueur. Oh, that, that stuff is, is just magical. That, that I is have the that... only thing my body can process. I could have a, a mug of that straight every day for breakfast uh, and, you know, die at age 35, but yeah, I mean, it's... it would be worth it. It's like a good shot of Four loco for your body. It doesn't know if it's yeah. going up or down. <laughs> this just gets me to regular. <laughs> oh man, is there a more brilliant character ever devised than Krusty the Clown? Except maybe Irish Krusty. Hey hey ho ho. Hey hey. Mom had uh, ten kids. Three of them lived. Then the plague hit. Hey hey, hey. ho ho. Then they closed the factory. Hey hey. <laughs> you know, I feel like Wiggler is the most underused enemy in the Mario universe. Well, I mean, his his uh, mileage is kind of limited. Unless he's like a straight line or a treetop, there's not much Wiggler can really... Well, yeah, valid point. I mean, you step on him and he gets mad, but who doesn't? Yeah, but I mean, he gets, you know... I will say Angry Wiggler, Angry Wiggler Sprite is one of my favorite sprites. I cannot argue with that. 
Uh, Hello. Hey, red coins. Hmm. Is that uh, secret star, or do they just give you like a one-up? No, I think that was actually for a um, secret star. I was gonna say, I wasn't sure what the <clears throat> rules of red coins are in this game. Uh, collect all eight, and you get a thing. Okay. Because there's like Mario 64, where they were worth a star, and then there's like New Super Mario Brothers, where they're worth like maybe a power-up or a one-up, or... Mm-hmm. Do 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 do. Oop. Was it playing that music? Yes. All right. Then they are. Then they are acceptable. What the hell is going on in this stage? Why what? does that keep happening? Uh, because I panic and you? I push too hard on the controller. Uh, you know what? You know what? We're going this way. <laughs> Screw the optional star. Damn you! Did these those. face masks freak anybody else out? Uh, I think they freaked everybody out. I mean, that's straight up demonic. What is Nintendo's game here? Nintendo, well, you know, I really miss when Nintendo was kind of gutsy and did things like that. Where, like, they would have these, like, kids games that would just turn on you in a flash of a second. In a heartbeat, you know, or you're playing a game and then all of a sudden... There's you know... Angry Wiggler. Okay. Angry... There's Angry Wigglers. Oh, murder. Wiggly. 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 Wigglins. A uh, murder of Wigglins. Isn't that the plural of crows, a murder of crows? Yeah, but okay. I'm, I'm taking it and applying it to the Wiggler. Problem? No, no. I, I kind of assumed that was the plural of Wiggly, Wigglers. Sorry, Sarah and I went out for drinks right before this episode. So, uh, who drove home? I did, of course. I drive better when I'm drunk. Officer? Officer. Oh, Officer. <laughs> what I really want to know was... is, where's the other village people, Officer? <laughs> yeah, right? You look awful cute in that uh, costume there. Sir, it's a uniform. Sure it is. Oh, Hello, what is this do? Why what is there is... a green pea block? I don't know. What have you done? What What is this contraption you've built? Oh, oh it, it stops time. time. It just goes full on Dio Brando. Super stopping time, bros. Ha ha ha. All of the punning. All, right. All of the punnering. There's a regular pee. Now let's see if this helps. I took a regular pee this morning. You know, usually like when I first wake up, it's always like a little slow going, which uh, I assume means my bladder is eventually going to fail and I will die young. Um, this morning, just everything was nice and regular. Um, oh, I see now. Okay. I know what they... I kind of know what they want. I still don't see it. Okay. Wait for it. Oop. But anyways, that was kind of a nice relief, and it made, made my day start out very positively. Chris, I don't care. Yes, you do. And then, like, so positively, as a matter of fact, this I was telling you earlier that I had kind of a productive day. I reorganized my whole office uh, to, to make it more efficient. Oh, all right. After earlier this week having rearranged my son's room to make it much more roomy. Well, now, how am I supposed to... I think you have to... There, wasn't there a way to make uh, blocks here above you and get that vine? Or is that the P block? That, that was the P block, sac- yeah. You just sacrificed. Hmm. No, hmm. fly down lower. Maybe you had to hit that before uh, you went and got the red coins? They have. Let's do that door again. That's the key. No! Oh, boy. Oh, you could have swum! Swam! No, Swimmed. no, no. I was just falling to my death. Yeah, but he was doing the swim animation. Okay, you, you know, you know. That was just that was just wishful thinking on Luigi's part. You know what we do? We're just um. Super Luigi. We're just gonna <clears throat> go back to the hub world. Yoshi. And, uh, we're just gonna Yoshi it up. <coughs> we're just gonna play the sacrifice play. I mean, I could figure out this puzzle, or I. I was well, gonna say after this, it may end up having to be an episode. Cause I'm going. Yeah, because we're about at an you know at an hour, excluding yeah. when my television plopped. Yeah, that whole chestnut. Did you have to let me know what um, you know, take me virtually shopping with you tomorrow. Just text me your options, and I will let you know what I think. Uh, well, knowing us, I we'll probably like... just use the backup backup television tomorrow. And I was then... gonna say, I feel like I should be a major part of all your like, buying decisions. Oh wait, hold on. That's just kind of the role I've given myself in your life. We're getting close point. to the end, by the way. We're on world uh, six. Awesome. We're getting hey, what there. was that um, um, Mario X mod that uh, someone sent us on the channel? Have you, have you checked uh, that out yet? Something something gatekeeper. Um, 
no, I totally intend to do that. Um, it looked pretty interesting, so that's probably going to be my next project after this. It's it's a much smaller game in scope. Okay. It's more of an episode than a whole game. Nothing wrong with that. So, yeah, I definitely wanted to do that. Yeah. And at this point, I'll play the hits until you until I find like a much better logo. We're pretty much using Mario X as an umbrella for all of these games anyways. So. Uh, I'll I'm one again when I have time. I'm going to go ahead and make one for this. Sweet. So, I I have planned out what I'm going to do. I just need to do it yet. All right. I got gotcha. you. All right, Yoshi. See you in hell. Oh, he's alive. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Yoshi. I mean, uh... <laughs> what was I supposed to do? Stab him in the head? I mean, there were ways around it. You know, are you of the mind that um, the tongue animation for Yoshi is a result of Mario punching him in the back of the skull? That's certainly what it looks like. That's how I've always understood it. I just figured it, it's kind of like using spurs on horses. That's just the way this universe operates. No one really thinks about it. I love this Metroid music. Oh, I wish I could hear it. Which which song is it? Uh, Meridia. Oh, yes. Dude, Metroid has, like, my favorite game music. You know, the Super Nintendo was really a golden age of just awesome, awesome oh, entries. Boy. Yeah. Ooh, we're gonna have to ride this Wiggler. Giggity. There we Man, go. Man, Mario's been riding a lot of uh, kind of phallic-shaped objects this episode, hasn't he? It's an episode co-hosted by Sigmund Freud. <laughs> Sometimes a giant throbbing oh, wiggler no. is just a giant wiggler. And it is a repressed sexual urges for your mother. I loved how seriously... <laughs> it oh, counts. They didn't... It counts. They still gave it to you? Yep. They better have given... Okay, cool. Okay, well, you know what? We will finish the um, World 6 on uh, the next episode then, because I still got to figure out where this star is over here, and I don't want to faff about during the episode doing that, so we'll just catch that later. Nice. Hey, Nick, are you still in there? We still got to talk about some things. Well, I got Jeff Bezos out here, and he's getting cold. Oh, God, I can see them through my broken window. I'm going to throw the broken oh. TV at him. That echidna seems to have a very acute case of the horniness. How many hey, you people... Shut up, Sigmund. How many people are in this episode? Okay, that's I'm I'm getting out of here. Everyone out of my house. Out. Go. I go. I can show Outs. you the world. Shut up, lad. All right. Next time I'm playing this.